Lloyd Cruz, Southfield City Council President. We're glad to have everyone that is present today, and uh, we hope everyone has been has been safe. Families have been doing well again during these difficult times. Um, we're going to start our meeting. This is a regular meeting of the City Council. Um, taking place today, September 29th at 6 o'clock via WebEx. Um, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Thanks. Raza? Brightwell? Here. Haskins? Here. Mandelbaum? Present. Morris? I think Morris caught me. I'm going to unmute because there's a lot of people in our attendee list. She might have called in on that. Morris, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear can you hear now. Me? Yep, I can hear you now. Taylor? Here. Cruz? Cruz? Present. Uh, Mr. President, you have a quorum. We have the mayor. Uh, we have other seniors. Um, Management on the line is with our city administrator, deputy city administrator, and our city attorney. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll start off as as always at our regular meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now move into our presentations portion. Um, we have a joint resolution um, that the mayor will present regarding domestic violence and awareness. Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening, council and uh, members of the listening audience. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, um, or sadly, um, uh, domestic violence is something that occurs all too often in our city. And uh, October uh, is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, and in conjunction with that, our police department, 46th District Court, uh, The Haven, uh, Martin Luther King's Task Force, um, and a number of other uh, entities um, are doing, uh, trying to change of uh, uh, the uh, this paradigm with uh, domestic violence, uh, and so uh, we have a resolution this evening that uh, uh, speaks to um, uh, besides introducing uh, domestic violence month, it also speaks to uh, the uh, things that um, are going to take place um, this Sunday. Um, as uh, we're doing a, an awareness walk. So let me begin. Whereas the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence Awareness uh, Month first started Domestic uh, Violence Awareness Month in 1981, and whereas in 1984 the Domestic uh, Violence, against, uh, the Violence Against Women Act was passed, this le was led by Senator Joe Biden and considered a landmark in the fight against domestic violence. Whereas, sadly, family trouble and domestic violence calls to Southfield 911 are a daily occurrence in our city and have increased during the pandemic. And whereas the city of Southfield, Southfield Police Department, 46th District Court, the Haven uh, Domestic um, Violence Group of Southfield, Martin Luther King Task Force, um, will host the 2020 Bring, uh, Walk to Bring Awareness to Domestic Violence on Sunday, October 4th, uh, beginning at the Southfield uh, Municipal Campus, making a loop uh, around um, down Evergreen over to Red Pole Park and back. Um, and uh, the walk will be held at 11 and 2. We're doing uh, social distancing, asking people to wear masks. Um, and the walk is staggered. And continuing anyhow with uh, the resolution, whereas it is obvious that more be done to address domestic violence in Southfield than raising awareness of this societal problem. Drawing on the resources of the above-referenced organizations, the 46th District, District 
court is creating seminars that will be ordered for offenders of domestic violence as part of their adjudication. The court will also hold seminars for victims of domestic violence in hopes of providing skills and assistance in escaping toxic relationships. And whereas the Southwell Police Department will develop a domestic violence prevention response plan to identify private residences that have multiple domestic violence related calls to offer them assistance, counseling, and support services. And whereas, additionally, the South, uh, Southwell Police Department will develop a high risk response team consisting of a multidisciplinary group to plan a coordinated community response, including prevention and community education. And now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the mayor and council, city of Southwell County, Boca, state of Michigan, do hereby recognize October 1st to 31st, 2020, as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the city of Southfield. And we encourage the citizens of Southfield to join in the observance of Domestic Violence Awareness Month and to continue to raise awareness by spreading the word of its emotional and physical impact. And signed uh, this day, um, uh, September 29th, 2020. I'm uh, uh, Council President. I'm looking for a motion up by the Council to adopt this uh, resolution. Absolutely. Council, I think that motion. Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Mandelbaum. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the joint resolution violence awareness month. Support. Councilwoman Taylor. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Mandelbaum, supported by Ms. Taylor. We approve. Resolution uh, this evening uh, in regards to Domestic Violence Awareness Month beginning October 1st to October 31st. Um, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Right, well. Support? Yes. Costins? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Morris? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Banks? Yes. Resolution for Domestic Violence Awareness Month adopted. Thank you. All right. Madam Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. President? Yeah, Mr. Mandelbaum? Um, I also I wanted to mention, and, and I've had a conversation with the mayor as, as well as the uh, our police chief. Late last week, um, I received a call from one of the Jewish organizations, Jewish, um, so the Jewish Domestic Awareness uh, Advocacy Group. I forgot the official name, but it's something that was started back in the 70s that kind of fell off their radar. And um, they, they tapped me to be part of their new um board their new mission and and trying to help raise awareness for domestic violence not only within the the jewish community which unfortunately happens but you know within the greater community they work with haven and a whole bunch of other things and unfortunately because they were uh, they're still in the uh, infancy in trying to reinvigorate this this group um it was too late to join um the the march on or the walk on sunday uh, but we did have conversations with the chief and we're going to uh be working closely with him um in, tra in training and making sure that you know we know what resources are available and everything else so i just i just wanted to throw it out there that you know there's more this this is a, a bigger issue than people may realize and there's a lot of different organizations that are trying to find ways to help combat domestic violence so hopefully this will be a good partnership with the city when once this uh organization gets uh gets going again so thank you all right thank you all right uh, and again thanks everyone for uh, supporting this i think this is a very um important issue to be supportive of uh especially in these times uh, as we know things have become more contentious uh, during the COVID crisis. So we want to make sure that we're on top of the city and supporting those that may be uh, in 
in a difficult situation. So, all right. So we'll move forward now. Uh, we have consent agenda in front of us, uh, council. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, this is Councilman Brightwell. I make a motion that we approve consent agenda items A through F, and I would like to pull G for just further discussion. Okay. Well, we'd like to. Why don't we discuss it now, and then uh, we can make the motion. We can read okay. the motion. Well, what's what's the issue with G? And nothing really. I just this is my first time seeing it, and I heard about it earlier today. Can I get an explanation of does this does this cover the funds that we requested from the county to cover all the COVID um, expenditures that we went through? Uh, obviously, is is uh, all money is good money in this case, but I just I hadn't seen this before, and I just want to make sure does it it's inclusive of what we plan to receive for all the glass and everything we made preparation or is this uh, in addition to? Sure, uh, uh, Mr. Zorn, would you like to take this or? Um... Mr. President, um, our director of fiscal services is on the line just so that you can be aware. Okay, all right, very good. Uh, I'm Michael's director of fiscal services. I'm happy to step in on this one. Go right ahead. Uh, so this is un unrelated to that, Councilman Brightwell. This was um, distributed by the uh, state through um, I'm sorry. This was, they were referring to it as their revenue swap for August. So we did not receive our um, CVTRS statutory share in August. And instead they passed through this CARES Act money. Um, and they, they, that was kind of the trade off there. What we are doing with this is using it to supplement the public safety, public health grant amount that we won't be reimbursed because the program ran out of funds. So we had also applied for a little over 6 million from the state to cover public safety. Uh, that's our police and fire uh, first responders payrolls for a couple months during the pandemic. Um, as I said, that was a little over $6 million. Uh, the state had allocated $200 million for this program and they received applications totaling about $350 million. So what they determined to do was to distribute 50% of the requests. So we got a little over $3 million of that. And then the rest is going to be prorated. So this 267,000 that, that we received under the CRLGG program, the Coronavirus Relief Local Government Grants Program. We're gonna use that 267 to offset the amount that we won't get because of the proration. Okay. In addition to the 322,000 that uh, we were approved from the county. No problem, I, 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 wouldn't, I would not uh, deny this money. But I, just, I know it popped up and I just wanna make sure that I understood what it was for. So Austin, Based on COVID, are we still about two or three hundred thousand short based on what we expended for COVID? I we haven't looked at the lost revenues uh, in a couple uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Um, we were estimating a significant hit, especially as it relates to uh, our parks and rec and our library um, so, and our court. We are still. Um, we are still down from that, but we are we are looking at every opportunity to recover whatever we can through whatever means. And there's it's primarily the CARES Act funding. So there's the six million dollars that we uh, applied for from the state for our public safety uh, salaries and wages. There was an additional grant for a first responder hazard pay that we just processed. Um, that deadline was the 30th, actually tomorrow. Um, and then there is the money through the county that we're applying for. And it's all essentially CARES money. Um, and we, we're not quite done with that yet. So we are, 
We are seeking reimbursement wherever possible. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I should also mention the FEMA reimbursement that our emergency manager is working on. Okay. okay. Quite good. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, given those um, the explanations, I'd like to reintroduce my motion to approve the um, Senate, the consent agenda items A through G. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is in city administrator's arm. I just want to be clear, item G, the actual action is to receive and place on file the communication that council has been notified that these funds are in play. Uh, there was a requirement in the uh, submittal that required us to uh, have verification that we presented this material to city council. And the actual action is to simply receive and place on file the communication. Councilwoman Banks, I'll support the um, motion. Okay. Hello? I'm here. I'm, Nancy, I'm here. A, I don't know if some people dropped off. It looks like it was a. Is Mr. President, are you still there? Looks like some. People it looks like off. his microphone's off, but he's here. It's out. Here, it's kind of, it no. looks weird. I, I apologize. I have an electrician working here, and uh, he just cut the power off to my computer. <laughs> so I'm on my phone now. I apologize. Uh, so, uh, what up? What, 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 We're just what on the roll call for the motion. Okay. Well. Um, Haskins. Yes. Mandelbaum. Yes. Morris. Yes. Yeah. Taylor. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Banks. Yes. Brightwell. Yes. Consent agenda, consent agenda items A through G has been approved. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Madam Pro Tem, can I ask you to take over the meeting for a moment uh, so that I can just take a look at this and see what's happening right now? <laughs> if, if you're available. Yes, I'll go ahead and take over, Council President. It looks like our next agenda item is a public hearing. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, this is City Administrator Zorn. We're uh, requesting that City Council uh, uh, conduct a public hearing uh, for the additional Community Development Block Grant funds in the amount of 409000 eight hundred twenty nine dollars this was advertised um in the sun and uh upon the conclusion of the public comment uh we are asking council to act to authorize the uh the adoption of the uh proposed amendment um and for the listening and viewing audience, the city was awarded under round three of the 2019-2020 Community Development Block Grant COVID funding, um, an additional $409,829. We are proposing to use 15% for administration. That amount is $61,474. And the remaining 85% uh, percent for public services, human services, that's $348,355. Um, that, those funds will be used to help families, uh, low to moderate income families meet uh, mortgage, rental, uh, food, and utility assistance uh, with a cap up to $2,500 uh, per household. And then uh, we're asking council to hear public comment. And then upon the conclusion, adopt the recommended resolution, which is in your body, which is in your uh, packet. All right, thank you so much. This is a public hearing. 
Madam Clerk, do we have anyone that is prepared to speak this evening? Madam President, uh, Pro Tem, please open up the public hearing first, and then we'll just formally open it up. I apologize. We will now open up the public hearing. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone that is prepared to speak to this to the hearing? We'll wait the minute to see. As of right now, we don't have anyone, but we'll wait to see if anyone wants to speak to it. Madam President Pro Tem. And I will uh, mute all of the callers to see if anyone wants to speak to it, okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. All of the callers have been unmuted if anyone wants to speak to the public. Hello? Hello? Yes. Do we have a speaker, President Pro Tem? Can anybody hear me? Yes, yes we can hear ahead. you. We can hear you. It's not coming across too well on the audio, listening to the the computer as well as the phone. Can you please repeat what the public hearing is for? 2019-2020 Community Development Block Grant third round funding request for public it's a public hearing. Is this anything to do with the CARES Act? Ma Madam Chairwoman, the answer is yes. Terry Crow, through the chair, is it possible that you can explain it to audio? It's not really good. Then please forgive my voice. Through the chair, if I may. Go ahead. The city of Southfield under round three of the CARES Community Development Block Grant COVID funded has received an additional $409,829. We're proposing to use 85% of those funds for public services, human services, uh, to provide up to $2,500 per eligible, income eligible household for, to assist them with mortgage, rental, utilities, and uh, food. The remaining 15% or $61,474 will go towards administration. Thank you. Okay, we're going to, yes, go ahead. We're going to start the time now. You have uh, three minutes to make your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. City Administrator, for that. Please excuse my voice, and I hope that you can hear me. I'm in support of that particular block grant, but you have heard me talk about the fact that we need more funding for Haven. We keep hearing all of this dialogue about domestic violence being high on the rise, and it was high because of 2008. Now you're saying that it's high because of COVID. Domestic violence is what it is. And we really need to just make sure we are properly funding Haven's program. Also too, we have to make sure that we're reaching out to the community to make sure that they know that these services are available. And I think that we should make sure if the service is going to be available, that we do have expedited service. The people cannot wait. And I think we need to reduce the, the percentage for administrative costs. It would be great if there was no administrative cost and if all of that money can go towards what it's intended to go for. I think you can do away with the administrative costs for this one time because of this pandemic, and it would really show the character of not only the administration, but the character of the city. So I want you to consider that. And thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. 
Madam Clerk, are there any other speakers tonight? No, ma'am. This brings the public hearing to a close. Um, we have another public hearing and um, that is PSO. Madam President, Co -Chair. Madam President, we need to vote on the public hearing that was just closed. The resolution for the oh, community I, I development, Brock Blank. I'm, I'm sorry, I do, I do apologize. Can, uh, can I have a motion on the floor? This is Councilman Mandelbaum. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the 1920 CBDG CV third round funding request. Support. This is Tate, Councilwoman Taylor. Support. Okay, the motion has been made by Councilman Mandelbaum and supported by Councilwoman Taylor. All in favor? I need a roll call vote. Uh, Mandelbaum? Yes. Morris? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Cruz? Banks? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Cruz? Uh -huh. Okay, Cruz. Just, just got that. Yes. <laughs> Banks, I didn't. Banks, were you there? Yes. Okay. Uh, Brightwell? Yes. Yes. In Hoskins? Yes. Resolution adopted for the 2019 2020 Community Development Block Grant third round funding request. All right. And thank you, Madam Pro Tem, for uh, taking over for me for a minute so I can get things. No, that's okay. My, my pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> so we'll move on to item B. Uh, second public hearing, special use request of Fossil Sing Industrial Incorporated. And who's going to be leading out on this? This is hello. This is Planner Crowd. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. I can. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, uh, the special land use request PSL. U20-0010 also has a companion site plan, PSP20008. I'll introduce both of those before we uh, open the public hearing. Petitioner Kakasing Industry Inc. on behalf of the owner Great Lakes Water Authority. The property is located at 20920 East Street. If we can go to the next slide, please. It's on the east side of East Street between Shiawassee and West 8 Mile. Proposal is to construct two new water reservoirs um, totaling about 5 million gallon and a pump building and to demolish the existing reservoirs and pump station. Next slide. Uh, this is the aerial of the existing conditions. Next slide. Current zoning is single family residential and it's consistent with the future land use plan. Next slide. The facility has been there for quite some time. This is a photo of the entrance of the facility from East Street. Next slide. This shows the proposed site plan as well as the landscaping plan. The existing two water reservoirs are located on the eastern portion of the property. They will remain in place until the new ones are constructed and up and running. Then they will be demolished and a new retention basin and bioswale will be constructed in its place. Next slide. Uh, this is the uh, existing area with the site plan superimposed. So this is a two-phase project. They're going to construct the new reservoirs while the existing ones are operating. Again, once the new reservoirs are up and operating, they will demolish the old water um, storage facilities. Next slide. This is a perspective of what the, the new ones will look like. Next slide. Uh, some elevations of the, um, the pump station in the middle and the two water towers on the north and south. Next slide. Now, this is a rendering. Uh, if you recall these large white gas station type, uh, gas storage facilities, um, they are proposing to paint these two new uh, water storage facilities to match the existing brick or the proposed brick of the pump stations. This is 
will go towards their art requirement, and this has been vetted by the Arts Commission and approved. Next slide. Again, these are the uh, showing the reservoirs in relationship to the pump station. Next slide. These are details of the pump station. Next slide. And uh, currently there is uh, older chain link fence with Bob wire. Uh, we've worked with the applicant um, to replace the older chain link and Bob wire along East Street that's fronting the residential with this high grade uh, black wireworks anti-climb security and welded fence so that the aesthetic will be improved along East Street. Next slide. And um, with that, there is some additional landscaping and some upgrades to the fencing along their frontage. I believe we have uh, a whole team representing uh, Great Lakes Water Authority. I believe Jim Miller and Andrew Jurgens, among others, are on the line. If you want to make a few comments before the public hearing is open, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions the council may have. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I, this is Jim Miller from Cocosing Industrial. We are the design build general contractor under contract with Great Lakes Water Authority to build this facility. It's an upgrade to a facility that dates back to the 1960s. Um, I think even prior to that with the initial reservoir. So it, it is, it's, it's in deteriorating condition and badly in need of replacement. Uh, I'll let Andrew speak a little bit to the facility itself and how it fits into the overall system. Yeah, this is uh, Andrew Jurgens. Um, like Jim said, this is a near $45 million design build contract will improve the uh, water service uh, resiliency in the regional water supply. So this um, station serves um, more of southeast Michigan. Um, if I had to put an estimate on it, between uh, 200,000 and, 300, 200, and 300,000 people, you know, depending on system operations. So this is a um, major project by GLWA that we're aiming to reduce long-term O&M costs. Um, due to the aging or end of service life of the existing facilities, as well as um, improve our operations um, at the um, with the new facilities as well. So, Thank if you, there's no other comments, Mr. Chair, we'll turn it back to you for the public hearing. All right. Thank you. And uh, having heard the presentation, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I would now like to open the public hearing. Uh, if there are any individuals that would like to speak to this matter and this matter only, um, please identify yourself by giving us your name and address for the record. And you'll have three minutes to speak to it. Pamela Gerald, P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037-0155. I hope you can hear me well. My voice is not serving me today. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am, I can. Thank you. I wanted to ask a couple of questions. What is the material that's going to be used for the water supply device? That's the first question. The second question I wanted to know is if there was any piping involved is it going to be copper, galvanized steel, or PVC? And my last question is, he talked about the uh, art, art requirement, and they planned on painting art on this particular uh, development. This is a great time to put Black Lives Matter somewhere on this new device because it's in a predominantly African-American populated area in the city of Southfield, south of 8 Mile. And then is there any job for the people that live in Southfield? And is this going to be paid for by Oakland County in conjunction with Southfield? Does Southfield have to do some kind of sharing match in terms of money? 
And I thank you so much. Mr. Okay. Thank you. Mr. We'll, we'll hold the, we'll hold the responses until uh, we heard from uh, any other residents, if you don't mind. Uh, no, certainly. That way. That's fine. Thank you. Mr. President, at this time, we do not have anyone else for public comment for this particular public hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, public hearing is now closed. Uh, gentlemen, you now can respond to uh, the various questions that were asked, if you wish. If if I can remember all the questions. Um, the, the material for the structures themselves, the pump station in the middle uh, will be brick and split face block in earth towns. The water reservoirs themselves are approximately 27 foot tall and 190 foot in diameter. They'll be, they will be concrete with a painted finish to match the colors of the brick and block for the pump station. Um, her question about piping, the greatest, well, all of the piping on this facility is either buried or inside the pump station or tanks, and it's all large diameter, 24 inch and above. Uh, it will be steel piping, uh, which is typical in this type of a facility. There really are no service lines where she's referring to copper state or uh, PVC or there's there's no service lines like that involved in this project. This is a major pumping facility. Yeah, if I can, this is Andrew, if I can just add on every piece of equipment that will be used in this project is compliant with the standards NF, NSF 61 as well as American Water Works Association standards. Um, and then in, I think um, another question on the, the funding, this is part of GLWA's uh, capital improvements program. Um, so this is a budget internal to GLWA. Gentlemen, there was two more questions. Um, uh, are there any jobs that are being created? You want to talk about that one first? So there, there will not be any jobs created with this facility. This is um, an existing facility that GLWA has operators um, um, that we already have at the existing site. So this is um, maintaining the function of the existing site. We'll maintain the same workforce at the site. And then the last question, if you choose to respond, was dealing with the art requirement. Um, the, the art requirement that we propose by painting the reservoirs to match um, the, the masonry structure in between them was involved a, quite a discussion with the Arts Commission itself. We have we have no intention at this point in time um, or budget to do a, any type of mural or signage on these reservoirs. All right, thank you. And with that, through the chair, if I'd be happy to answer any other questions the council may have. And uh, I recommend, well, uh, we should take the special land use first, and then if there's any questions on the site plan, we can go into that. Okay, I'm back now. I'm sorry uh, for the technical problems, everyone. Through the chair, we, we, uh, we need either um, a motion on the special land use or we'd be happy to answer any other questions the council may have. Okay. Um, Ms. Banks, did you have any questions? Um, yes, I do. Thank you. Right um, to Planner Crow, were, um, were there any questions, concerns, or comments from the residents in the area? I know they did not speak this evening, but, you know, when the public hearings were held um, before the Planning Commission. 
No, no ma'am, we did not receive any um, responses at all during okay. this whole process. Okay, thank you. It, it looks like it's a um, nice, well thought out plan. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Brightwell? Uh, yes, I have a question that I brought up the last time this came about. Uh, I think it was answered uh, adequately, but I just, um, the no climb fence. Um, I know you water supply is, you know, you're going to have um, very adequate security. But are these these no climb fence? Is that state is that state of the art now? Um, I, I don't know that much about law enforcement, but is that the state of the art with respect to fence fencing? Through the chair, um, we were concerned about the old non-conforming uh, chain link fence and barbed wire, and we had requested that Great Lakes uh, install some type of uh, more aesthetic security fencing. And so this is uh, what is being proposed, and we we were happy with um, what they proposed. We we did talk about a number of different types of of uh, security fencing, but we are happy with with this. And if they if uh, someone from Great Lakes wants to elaborate on that, yeah, I can go um, ahead. Andrew Jurgens, just a comment on that. Our um, security group recently, within the last couple of years. Um, went through the exercise of looking at the fence systems and identified different newer options other than the barbed wire that would be acceptable for our facilities. And this water works snow climb fence was identified by our security group as one of the acceptable solutions. Okay, so you're saying it's functional. It's, it's functional for security purposes. Right. Okay. That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hoskins? Uh, no questions for me on this. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Mandelbaum? Uh, no questions. I think it's a great project, and I think the, uh, the proposed painting um, to match the building, I think, is a, is a great idea and a great addition, and uh, will make the area look nicer. Agreed. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Morris? No, no questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And Ms. Taylor? No questions. Thank you. All right. Anyone else on the call have any other questions or comments or concerns? All right. Uh, then we need, I guess we need a motion. Mr. Chair, this is Councilman Brightwell. I make a motion that we approve special land use request PSLU. Two zero dash zero zero one zero. Support. This is Councilwoman Morris. Okay. Good. Moved by Mr. Brightwell. Supported by Ms. Morris. That we uh, approve site plan as presented. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Morris. Special land use. Special land use, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank right. you. Thank you, Mr. Brightwell. Thank you. Okay. Morris? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Banks? Yes. Brightwell? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Special land use request uh, adopted. All right, thank you. Is there a motion for the site plan? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair, this is Councilwoman Taylor. I make a motion for the approval of PSP 20-0008 site plan review request of Copacine Industrial Inc. Support, support. Ms. Taylor and supported by Mr. Brightwell that we approve the site plan PSP 20-0008. Through the chair, this is the planner code. I just want to make sure everyone's aware. Uh, part of the site plan um, conditions are they have to receive, receive a waiver from the Zoning Board of Appeals for the existing bob wire that, that goes around the rest of the property as well as the height of the fence. Other than that, all the other conditions are pretty straightforward. Okay. 
before we vote, is there any concerns with that at all, Council? All right, hearing, hearing none, I'll ask the clerk please call the roll once again. Taylor? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Banks? Yes. Brightwell? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. yes. Mandelbaum? Yes. Morris? Yes. Site plan PSP 20-008 adopted. All right, thank you. And thank you, gentlemen, for your thank presentation this evening. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, that's all of our planning items for tonight. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Okay, we'll move on to uh, communications now. So uh, the lines are open for anyone that wishes to uh, give commentary to the council this evening. Uh, if you are, uh, if you do make a call in, please know that you have three minutes uh, for your statement, and uh, then we will have to move on to the next individual. Good evening, Gerard Mullen. Post Office Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 480 Mr. President, tonight I would like to talk about Section 11.18. 11.18 in the Southfield City Charter. Section 11.18 is entitled Amendments. 11.18 describes how to amend the Southfield City Charter in one easy step. Unfortunately, 11.18 conflicts with the not so easy to step Michigan state law, AKA the Michigan Home Rule Act, thus making section 11.18 in the Southfield City Charter null and void. 11.18 became null and void when the Southfield authors of 11.18 tried to adapt the Michigan Home Rule Act into the Southfield City Charter. That's when the second step in a two-step process got deleted. Step number one, the Southfield City Council, that's you folks, must first of all pass a proposed charter amendment. And then the next step, the missing step, step number two, the Southfield voters, that's us folks, must pass by ballot election the aforementioned proposed charter amendment. Sad to say, 11.18 deletes totally step number two the ballot election. In a word, you folks here on this city council need to fix section 11.18. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Council. Good evening. This is Pamela Gerald. I apologize to all the residents for my loss of voice today. We have talked about in the city of Southfield previously about some of the racial disparities that we've had in our city and compliments to the city 
for trying to deal with those racial disparities by putting African Americans in leadership positions. So I want to say that first of all. Thank you so much. I want to appeal to the African American people on the city council and some of the city advocates. The residents voted to do away with the primaries. And you guys have taken it upon yourself to put the issue of the primaries back on the ballot. In my opinion, what you're saying to the residents is that they were not competent when they voted to do away with it. In my mind, it is not voter suppression. And to use those words during a time like this, where racially we are in perilous times, is not conducive to anybody. I want you guys to stop trying to taper and tailor this charter to fit your own political interests. If you want to run for mayor, get off the council and run for mayor. That charter is supposed to be resident-friendly, administration-friendly, where we can work together as a team. I am so sick and tired of all of you trying to tailor that charter for your own political needs and reasons. You owe the residents an apology because they took the time to get educated on the issue and why we wanted to do away with these primaries. You have basically called my residents colossally incompetent because you put this right back on the ballot. It's a disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourselves. And I want you to be very careful how you're doing things. You can't keep saying that something is improper, and then you turn around and commit the same offense. Now think about that. Let your minds marinate on that for a bit. Thank you. All right, thank you. We have another caller. I just unmuted them. Caller number four. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. I can. Okay, my name is Rhonda Terry. I'm the outreach caseworker for the Southfield Human Services Department. And I just wanted to speak about the Southfield Goodfellows is seeking donations for our 2020 holiday giving. And I want to thank Allison Bettis and Rochelle Freeman, Freeman for helping to spearhead um, our program this year. The Southfield of Goodfellows annual drive to provide food, clothing, and gifts for low-income families in our community is facing a great challenge this year due to the COVID pandemic. This year, Southfield of Goodfellows is seeking only monetary donations to purchase gift cards for low-income families and senior citizens that live in Southfield and Lathrop Village. The Goodfellows are asking individuals and organizations to donate by Thursday, October 29, 2020. To make a monetary contribution, please donate on the Goodfellows Secure website at www.southfieldgoodfellows.org, or you can make a check or money order payable to Southfield Goodfellows and mail directly to their P.O. Box 2336 Southfield, Michigan 48037. And also, if you have any further questions, you can call myself, Rhonda Terry, at Southfield Human Services 248 seven nine six four five four zero or leave a message on our twenty four hour voicemail two four eight seven eight eight five eight nine nine. Thank you. Well, thank you, Miss Terry, for the information. That was very helpful. We appreciate it. Council President. Yes, Ms. Could, Banks. Thank you. Could we have Miss Terry slowly repeat the website? Um for everyone again, if someone wants to donate online. Okay, www.southfieldgoodfellows.org. Should I repeat the address where they can mail check the money orders also? Yes, if you could just repeat 
talk to me, information, this information again, uh, that would be helpful. Okay, or you can mail a check or money order, pay a boat to Southfield Goodfellows, P.O. Box 2336, Southfield, Michigan, 48037. All right, thank you, Miss Terry. Thank you. Mr. President, we don't have any, we're, well, that concludes our uh, individuals participating in the communications this evening. All right, great, thank you. All right, uh, I'll turn to council now. If there are any closing comments that uh, we would like to make, uh, we'll st I'll start with today with uh, Madam Pro Tip uh, Morris. No, I have no comments this evening. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Taylor? Uh, no comments tonight. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Banks? Um, yes, thank you. I would like to invite, uh, I would like to notify the um, listening public that the 2020 Household Hazardous Waste Event will be held in the city of Southfield on October 24th at the Rassock Center, which is located at 20875 Maple Ridge Avenue in Southfield. The hours of operation will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, this is gonna be an opportunity for you to do your fall cleaning. And if you need to recycle clothing, shoes, papers, computers. Um, this will be the time to take it to the center. They will be accepting electronic waste and up to three boxes or 100 pounds of paper for shredding. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. Banks. Uh, Mr. Uh, no oh. comments, no, no comments. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Hoskins. Uh, thank you. Uh, the only thing I, I, I want to say is, um, well, um, absentee ballots are available. Uh, I encourage everyone to go vote. Um, please reach out to um, the clerk's office uh, if you need a ballot. Um, and it is very important this year, uh, more than ever, that we are all out voting. Uh, that's it. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Hoskins, and uh, I think uh, the entire council would uh, support your commentary uh, in that regard. Definitely, and get out and vote, uh, Mr. Mandelbaum. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Hoskins took what I was going to say, but I will say that I have already received my absentee ballot in the mail and it will be going back to the clerk uh, tomorrow as I've already filled it out. Uh, so, you know, don't let it when you get it, don't let it uh, linger in your home because you tend to forget about it. Try to fill it out right away. And um, I will be dropping it off in the drop box outside of City Hall. Um, there's other options as well that I'm sure our clerk will will discuss. So thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, so uh, do, 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 do. I think I hit everybody there. Mr. Mayor, you're up. Um, good evening once again. Um, I want to first um, acknowledge um, the uh, Detroit Lions, Oakland County, uh, Urban Unity. On uh, Sunday afternoon, we had another successful census event uh, registering um, folks um, who had not uh, had yet done so. Um, th uh, this was at Pebble Creek Apartments. We've ma been making the rounds of apartment buildings. Um, uh, you may have heard that the census was uh, predicted to end or extended to um, September 30th. 
there was a court order giving it another month. And uh, today, uh, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross has, um, despite the court order, said the census will conclude um, next week on October 5th. Um, so we're still urging people, if you have not uh, signed up, it's very easy. It takes a couple of minutes. Uh, the, um, and you can actually you can call it in. Uh, 844-330-2020. That's 844-330-2020. Um, I also want to mention that uh, uh, there will be a COVID testing um, site on Saturday morning, October 3rd, from 9 uh, to noon. This is at the uh, Silver Garden Event Center, the Shriners. Uh, center below um, Mount Vernon on Southfield Road. And this is um, being sponsored by Family Assistance for Renaissance Men, um, the farm group. And it's drive-through testing with, uh, done by the um, Wayne State University Phys Physicians Group. Um, people can register online uh, or um, they can uh, register on site. Uh, they'll do, uh, besides COVID, they'll do um, blood pressure, HIV, antibodies, and flu shots um, are also available, uh, again, Saturday morning, 9 to noon, Silver Garden Event Center. Uh, for questions, you can call 313-717-2800. Three one three seven seventeen twenty eight eighty two. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anything from administration tonight? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, this is Administrator Zorn, and just a, a few comments, as <coughs> indicated by. Uh, Finance Director Austin uh, Michaels, the city has issued hazard pay to our uh, sworn public uh, safety officers as permitted by uh, state statute. Um, I want to thank council for the support on the community development block grant COVID funding, particularly thank uh, Rick Lampy and Rhonda Terry for the additional work in administering these uh, programs in this uh, time of crisis. Um, COVID continues to be a, a major focus uh, of the administration um, and are unfortunately many of the numbers in Michigan are trending the wrong way and is very uh, concerning. I want to just remind people to mask up, wash your hands frequently, uh, please socially distance, get your flu shot and please dispose of, of your mask and other paper goods uh, properly. Um, still a lot of parking lots are being littered uh, with masks and that, and, and it's really unnecessary. That's all I have this evening, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Zorn. Um, Madam uh, Attorney. Good Thank evening, you. everyone. Um, I have nothing to add this evening. All right. Thank you, Ms. King. We appreciate that. Um, going on to the manager. Uh, Mr. President, I do have uh, two items this evening. Um, but first, I'll address a couple of things in my comments. Um, it's been a lot of uh, rumors out here with uh, this election, and we have a lot of false information that's being spread. So I just want to uh, just inform the residents that you know all 36 precincts will be open on Election Day here. Uh, in Southfield, the polling locations will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, I will also like to say that as of right now, um, we've issued thousands of absentee ballots. So Southfield has issued the most absentee ballots in all of Oakland County. So thank you voters for um, requesting ballots and we're getting those out as soon as possible. Uh, we're mailing out ballots um, every day, the post office um, has done an incredible job. Uh, our turnaround time and some of the ballots have been as short as two days. Obviously, there's exceptions 
to everything, but they have really been delivering uh, for us to make sure that our residents get the ballots. We are still asking for residents to allow seven to 10 days to get the ballots. Uh, my office is open daily from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you did want to come in and vote uh, in person over the last few days, we've had a steady flow of individuals that have been uh, voting in person. So we want to continue to uh, keep the momentum of uh, voting. Uh, this is, as others have indicated, uh, one of the uh, most important elections um, in our lifetime. Uh, so again, all of our precincts are open. Uh, we are open uh, for absentee voting. Uh, so I'll go ahead and transition into my first item. Um, it is an authorization to accept the Center for Tech and Civic Life grant. Um, myself, uh, with the assistance of my staff, we recently applied for um, a grant for the Center for Tech and uh, Civic Life. And uh, the purpose of the grant will be to operationalize safe and secure elections. As you guys know, it's no secret, conducting elections through a pandemic has been very, um, is very um, hard and difficult. So I do wanna thank my staff for all of their hard work, but we were able to receive $446,000, 446, $225,000 uh, in grant money. Um, this will, pay additional hazard pay for the workers that are um, going to be working the election in addition to uh, additional drop boxes across the city. Uh, so tonight I will be asking the honorable honorable body to uh, pass a resolution so that we can receive this grant um, to use this money uh, to help us um, administer a safe and secure election uh, for November the 3rd. Are we looking for a motion? Council President? Mr. President, I'm, yes, we are. I'm sorry, I was on mute, my bad. Um, I <laughs> move to authorize and accept the Center um, for Tech and Civic Life Grant um, as proposed. Support. Support this is Councilwoman Taylor. All right, I heard about five supports. So I was moved by Ms. Banks, and the last one I heard was Ms. Taylor. So we'll say it was seconded by Ms. Taylor that we approve the authorization to accept the Center for Tech and Civic Life grant. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Banks? Yes. Brightwell? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Manderbaum? Yes. Morris? Yes. Taylor? F. Cruz. Yes. Resolution adopted to, for the authorization to accept the Center for Tech and Civic Life Grant. Thank you, Council. My next item is in this. Um, we will be allowed to uh, purchase uh, secure ballot boxes. We have already installed two that was previously ordered, uh, one by the library and one in the cul-de-sac in front of City Hall. We are looking to install additional um, ballot boxes throughout the city for the convenience of our residents. And um, this grant um, that you guys just approved will allow us to do that. But part of our charter also states that um, we can buy these additional ballot boxes um, without uh, competitive bidding in accordance with chapter eight of our, uh, <clears throat> our charter. So I am asking, um, if council would uh, adopt a resolution uh, giving permission to uh, purchase additional ballot boxes from a company called MB Central uh, Enterprises that's located in Texas uh, so that we can get uh, abrupt delivery of these items and have them mobilized for our residents. So uh, Madam Clerk, just a question. Um, how often would those uh, ballot drop boxes be checked? Are they on a daily basis? Uh, or? It'll be checked multiple times a day. Okay, so it will be sure to get to the, the clerk's office uh, probably sooner than mailing it, am I correct? Correct, that's the whole purpose of the, the ballot boxes is to have an expedient way to make sure the, the, the ballots are getting to the clerk's office um, outside of the U.S. Uh, Postal Office Service. Awesome. And they are secure and everything uh, so that they can't be tampered with? Correct. 
That sounds like an excellent idea or program to me. Uh, Council, any questions? Or do we have a motion? I have one question. Right here, Mr. Mandelbaum. Will will there be either on the web or through cable a location of all these boxes? Right. I just had to get them approved before I did any of that. So um, saw that, that council's approved them. We'll look at the locations and make sure that that's put on the website. So I, I couldn't do that before they were actually approved. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes, I can make a motion that we accept or allow the purchase of the secure ballot boxes. Support. Support. Councilwoman right. Morris. Been moved by Ms. Taylor, supported by Mr. Brightwell, that we approve the purchase of the secure ballot drop boxes uh, for the city clerk's office. Uh, are there any other questions or concerns before we vote? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Brightwell? Yes. Yes. Haskins? Yes. Anderbaum? Yes. Morris? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Banks? Yes. Resolution adopted for the purchase of the ballot boxes. Thank you, Council. All right. No, thank, thank you. And, uh, that was a pretty hefty grant you uh, secured for the city. And so we appreciate your hard work on that, too. Um, uh, let's move on now to uh, the treasurer. Mr. Lohenberg, are you, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, share good news. Uh, I shared with the Council Finance Committee already, but hopefully the rest of the Council uh, received a copy of the report. But uh, we have uh, had a, a very good year. This past year, uh, we got our uh, outside consultants uh, review of the performance for our bonds uh, investments. And based upon the investment policy that the Council approved and uh, the overview of the Council Finance Committee as well, uh, we an actually ended up in the second percentile in the country. Uh, we earned over 5% for our investment performance. And so uh, thank you very much for Council for allowing uh, the investment policy that we have to give us the flexibility to uh, do very well for and conservatively for our citizens. That's all, right. all I have to do. Thank you, Mr. Lohenberg. That's great news. Appreciate that. Uh, anything from the planning department? Uh, the chair, this is Planner Crowd. I just wanted to mention that two of the three peace poles were installed on Friday. We had some underground utility conflicts with the third pole. So we're resolving those, and as soon as we get that corrected, we'll have that third pole in and then some landscaping done, and we'll keep you posted. That sounds great. Thanks, Terry. I really appreciate it. You guys have been working hard on that. So I thank you for, for your efforts. Cool. All right. Uh, Thanks. Uh, is our assessor or engineer uh, online to have anything to offer before we adjourn? Okay. We have uh, nothing, nothing to schedule at this point and, and no ordinances to approve. We're going to postpone the closed session this evening to a date uncertain. So um, I will be getting back with council in terms of uh, when we will be uh, taking that meeting on. So um, with that being said, uh, our meeting has come to a close. Unless there's anything else that anyone has for the good of the order before we adjourn. All right. I don't hear hearing none. Uh, I will call this meeting adjourned. <laughs>